2016, what a year. In five years, we're all gonna look back and remember Bowie. We're gonna remember Prince. We're going to remember that Bob Dylan won the Nobel Prize. We are also going to remember that the UK voted for Brexit. We will also even remember that the US elected Donald Trump as president. But I know that we're also going to remember it because it's going to be the best year for fintech companies. Today, you're going to meet 10 of them. Welcome to a demo day. You're not going to meet them. You're actually going to meet them here for about 90 seconds. But it's even more important that you're going to get a chance of actually sitting down with them and talking to them. You're going to have a very intense Q&A session. This is not just a show for us. This is actually a working session, and I would really, really ask you to spend time with the companies. They're fascinating. A lot of the relationships that the companies build are built in this event. I'm going to be very short, but before we get started, I just want to take you through the journey that each one of these entrepreneurs took during the last 10 months. So sometime around February, March, they heard or they knew about, from, about Startup Bootcamp. And this could be from a company that was part of a program previously, from an investor, or maybe from one of you here that, that we uh, sent it to, over to us. They applied together with 450 other companies. And then a couple of weeks later, they received a call from somebody from, from our team, one of our scouters. And it was a typical business review call. What do you do? Who's your team? What sector? What are your aspirations? Why are you joining startup? Why do you want to join Startup Bootcamp? So they did that call, and then they did about four or five more calls with people from my team. After a while, around Ju June, July, they received a call, and they said, you know what, we really want you to come to, to London. You are selected as one of the top 20 fintech companies this year. So they come over to London, and in London, they spent three days with Startup Bootcamp, with our mentors, with our partners, are with our investors. And they do 20 meetings, literally 20, 45 minute meetings in which they're nailed. They're told, your business is so good, your business sucks. Uh, you're gonna make it, why are you gonna make it if Google did not make it? This has been tried, um, this has not been tried, it's never gonna happen. Are you really solving anything? So they're tested to the bone, they're tested and, until exhaustion. At the end of those three days, they're told, together with nine other companies, you made it to Startup Bootcamp. So they're happy, they celebrated, they made it. But that's actually only the starting point. That's only the selection. The program then begins for them in September. A lot of them, most of them, move from outside London into London. They start in September, and then what they experience is very similar, is very similar actually to a pressure cooker. So, it's something, it's a place in which is so much intensity that we, what we want to happen is we want what normally happens in 12 months on the street to happen in three months. And I do really believe that we achieved that. And the entrepreneurs get into this pressure cooker, they bring in the investors, mentors, partners, the experts that we bring from the outside, and the startup bootcamp team, and in that super high pressure, they start validating their business they actually realize if there's actually a need for their business or not. They look for investors. They change their technology. They talk to the regulator. They have um, sometimes disagreements among the team. And then they actually go out and prepare pilots or proof of concepts with the partners. So imagine if what I'm saying to you sounds like 100,000 million trillion things, and if it's exhaustive, imagine what it is when you are the entrepreneur and you're doing this for three months. It's amazing. It is a pressure cooker, and these guys today, I'm, amazing, I'm amazed that they still have their energy because we are all, they are all exhausted from that, from that effort. So, enough with that. We're going to see the companies right now. The way that this is going to work is you're first going to see the 10 companies come here and tell you very briefly what they do. It's only a 90-second pitch. They're going to be introduced by a person that has worked with them for the last three months. And after that, once we finish this session, we're going to have working sessions. Uh, which they're going to be 15-minute working sessions. The only thing that you need to think of right now when you see these 10, these 10 uh, sessions is you have to pick five. Pick your five most favorite companies because those are the ones that you're going to be, get a chance to see, see in them. 
We will explain more at Wina. We'll explain more once we, get, once we get going. You're a fintech entrepreneur, and you could access global banking in five lines of code. Also imagine the fintech world and the banking world working together harmoniously. A wonderful dream. The reality is very different. I've felt the pain as being a serial fintech entrepreneur for the past 20 years. The reality is it takes six to nine months to even connect to the technology in a bank. It takes nine to 12 months to open an account. Very frustrating. And you've got no visibility whether you're going to be banked or not. Fintech is very hard to be bankable. But you can understand it from a bank's perspective. The reality is, a bank, for a bank, it costs sixty to eighty thousand dollars to onboard a fintech company. They make ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year out of that company, so the economics don't really add up. And a compliance risk can lead to millions and billions of dollars of fines, or you can go to jail, which is not a good thing for anybody. It doesn't help anybody. So welcome to Rails Bank. We bring together the banking world and the fintech world to work together harmoniously. We have a network, global network of banks. We connect with our platform and our APIs to deliver the promise of accessing global banking and five lines of code. We're in pod 10. Come and listen to us and understand how we do it. And thank you for your time. I'm a trader with uh, 15 years of experience in emerging markets. My clients, the asset managers, would rely on me to find large blocks of shares in a lot of these far-flung markets. But many times I failed them because my network simply was not big enough to find the other side to the trade. I thought there has to be a better way. There has to be a way for asset managers not just to rely on my professional network to find the other side to the trade, but to be able to simultaneously plug into a multitude of global and local networks. There has to be for a way for traders not to be limited by their Rolodex, but to be able to play on the same level playing field as the global bank. That's why we created ZeroFlows. ZeroFlows is a global information network to look for liquidity in emerging and frontier markets. Just the other day, we had a UK asset manager that was looking for a small cap stock in Nigeria. He couldn't find it through his usual channels, but on our platform, he was able to anonymously find the other side with an African fund halfway across the world and do it, and do it through his usual channels. There's over $300 billion invested in these markets, and asset managers spend $10 billion every year getting in and out of chairs. We have over 50 financial institutions on our platform, and we'd love to tell you more about us. Thank you. Since 2008, 20 of the largest global banks alone have been fined well over $235 billion for misconduct. Now, over the years, the regulators have stepped up the game. And <laughs> MIFID II is coming January 2018, and many are not ready yet. All electronic communication has to be retained for compliance, whether that's emails, phone calls, or mobile messaging. I'm a former banker, and I love using WhatsApp. And in fact, all in this room here, we all love using mobile messaging, whether it's WhatsApp, iMessage, WeChat, the list goes on. But there's a problem. Whenever you use these kind of mobile platforms within regulated financial services, you become liable. Your company might become liable. And let me tell you an open secret. Right now, today, your employees are using these platforms, your colleagues using these platforms, and they're using that those with your clients. But we as Kiwi Lab are here today to tell you that we have a solution. This doesn't have to be a problem. We bridge the gap between compliance requirements and mobile messaging. We have a solution for corporate devices, but we also can balance um, for bringing your own device culture, the compliance requirements and privacy. Join us in our pod number four for our presentation. Learn how we are trying to change how the financial services market thinks about mobile devices as a whole. Thank you very much.
it's actually likely that we won't get to your call today. The next human voice that you might hear... Isn't that the most frustrating voice that you can ever hear? When all you want to do is get a simple answer and instead you hear, your call is very important to us, or please press one, or please press another decimal place. I think there should be a better solution to this. Actually, let me rephrase that. At EnterpriseBot, we have created a better solution. We have created a solution that allows banks and insurance companies to actually reply to their customers in under three and a half seconds and save 60% every time a customer query is routed through our system. If you want to hear more about how a small startup has already started making revenue, is designing a pilot with Lloyds, Rabobank, and many others, please come to pod number eight. Thank you. Contract negotiation is a nightmare for 90% of the companies. For them, it's like trying to kill the Hydra, the mythological monster with nine heads, impossible to kill. As soon as you cut one head, other two are popping up. And people were horrified by the monster until Hercules found the right tool to kill the Hydra. Fast forward, 2016, six million contract professionals are still fighting the Hydra every day in their organization because they don't have the right tool to kill the monster. This is costing industry 80 billion pounds a year, something we need to fix right now. With Tracti, those problems no more. Tracti is a cloud-based contract negotiation platform designed to respond to those challenges. We bring social and agile methodologies into the organization we streamline negotiation, contracting, and payment procedure, and we've been able to reduce 30% the cost connected with contract negotiation in our clients. Yes, this is not a story. Tracti is live and operating already in 10 companies, and we just signed another contract with a major energy company in Italy. But this is not enough. We need your help. So if you want to invest in us and tap into a six billion market opportunity, or you want to kill the other in your organization, that's your call. We are Tracti, and we are in pod number one. A few years ago, I grabbed a coffee with the director of Hilton's European resort business, and he explained to me that he had a problem. He wanted to be able to collect payments from his UK customers in euros, not in sterling. He looked at various FX platforms, but none of them seemed to work because they're designed to make payments, not collect them. So we went away and we built him a multi-currency invoicing solution that he still uses today to collect millions of pounds worth of invoices. And along the way, we were able to reduce his late payments by 70%. And we learned one key thing. The easier you make it for your customers to pay, the quicker you get paid. So if you happen to be one of the 600,000 UK SME exporters who want to get paid quicker and work smarter, then Pace Invoice is for you. We have completely rebuilt our platform specifically for those SMEs. And we, are, we have a list of clients, channel partners waiting to go live on our platform. We're here today to speak to investors, channel partners, and clients. So please, come and find us in pod seven and help us take pace global. Thank you. Let me tell you about two billion pounds that independent financial advisors can win each year because of our technology. In UK, there is over 20,000 financial advisors that every day might help people like you to reach financial goals. I was one of them. But because of the strict regulations that FCA introduced to the market, financial advisors are focused most exclusively on wealthy and high net worth investors, spending their time on 90% of their time on activities that don't generate revenues. So service is expensive. There is advice gap on the market worth two billion pounds, and 85% of the UK households is excluded. But this is also opportunity. Because of our work is very structured, we always ask the same questions and do the same things. We can automatize that. So we found the Zenit. We gather a data from the banks and financial advisors, put our algorithms on it, and we create the first and best AI for financial advisors. 
Imagine that you could be fully diagnosed before you, see, before, you, before you see your doctor, so in the clinic, you will only discuss the treatment. This is what Zenit do in finance. Thanks to our advanced technology, powered by machine learning, financial advisors are able to understand the customer's goals and expectations even before the first meeting happened. They are able to provide a tailor-made customer journeys and reduce costs up to 80%, going straight forward to bigger revenues. But this is not a dream. We're already working with 18 prospects, from the banks, insurance companies, and wealth managers. So visit us on pod number two to see how we are creating the next generation AI-powered financial advisors. Thank you. Business banking sucks. In my first startup, it took me eight weeks to open up a business bank account. When I finally got it open, I had to leave my office in the pouring, freezing Berlin rain to walk to the branch to wait there for half an hour to cash in a check or send money abroad. On top of that, I didn't have the business apps and services that my business desperately needed, and the online banking was terrible. So I started speaking to some of my peers to figure out, do you guys have the same problems that I do? And in fact, millions of businesses all across Europe have that exact same problem. We, don't want, we want to spend less time on our banking and more time on our business. We want our banking to be done in a tap of a button, the same way we order an Uber or book an Airbnb. And that's exactly what we're building at Penta. At Penta, we're building a digital bank for SMEs that makes banking easier than ever and that incorporates all the best fintech apps and services in one place. So, where are we now? We've spoken to over 100 companies to really understand their pains around SME banking. We have a working prototype that we're currently testing and that we plan to go live with in the spring. And now, we're raising a seed round that's going to help get us there. So, if you're an interested investor, or if you want to learn about how we're completely redefining SME banking, come see us at pod three. We'd love to tell you more. Thank you so much. Every single one of you is leaving 800 pounds on the table every single year. How? By overpaying on your recurring bills. Most of you, you come home in the night, you open the door to your apartment, and you look at all the unopened envelopes and bills on your kitchen table. And you look at them in disgust, because deep down you know that you're paying too much. And deep down you know that you really should look into it. But as always, you say, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. But this tomorrow never comes. And even worse, this tomorrow doesn't come for millions of households in the UK every single year who overspend up to 15 billion pounds on their recurring bills alone. All of it because it's confusing, because it takes too much time. Simply put, because it's an effort. But we from Mobility are fixing this. We analyze our customer's transaction history, find out where he's overspending, and at the same time offer him smarter and better alternatives directly from the market through Mobility bringing finally ease into the process of saving money. So please join us now to hear more about how we developed a profit-sharing model with our customers. Please join us now to hear more about how we are working with Lloyds Banking Group and Rabobank on testing our proposition with customers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us over there if you're looking for the place where you can not only invest your money, but also save money. Thank you very much. Bogdan is a Romanian who is moving to Germany because he wants to support his family back home. His buddy already sorted him out a job on a construction site for 2,500 euros a month. So he goes there on Monday morning, and the foreman asks him, where is your health and safety certificate, and where would you like your wages paid to? He said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have those things, and he had to go back home. To make a long story short, Bogdan spent four months economically struggling on his buddy's couch, not making a dime. Can you imagine that phone call to his wife? Turns out, Bogdan is not alone. There are 30 million Europeans that have trouble when they open a bank account or they try to move, and we think that at Europe One, there is a better way. We strongly believe that there's a right to live, love and work wherever you are, and we are building a bank on a phone in your pocket wherever you go. 
We will open your account in 10 minutes, and we will have cards for your entire family. This is an excellent business opportunity. Turns out that these 30 million Europeans are actually worth 8 billion euros. And that's roughly the banking market for uh, in a retail banking market of the Netherlands. This is the money that's left on the table. So, please help me, help Bogdan tell a better story to his wife. Let's do some good, and let's make a lot of money together. We're over there, and I look forward to talking to you. Thank you.